clouds and cheer up, put on a happy face, and spread sunshine all over the place. So put on a happy face. I mean, that was such a great moment, looking back into the archives of an interview I did in 2017 with the late, now late, Gilbert Gottfried for the release of the documentary about his life. So I got to meet him, his wife sitting next to him, and the filmmaker behind it during that interview back in 2017. Yeah, the actor and comedian's family released this statement yesterday about his passing, saying, we are heartbroken to announce the passing of our beloved Gilbert Gottfried after a long illness. In addition to being the most iconic voice in comedy, Gilbert was a wonderful husband, brother, friend, and father to his two young children. Now, although today is a sad day for all of us, please keep laughing as loud as possible in Gilbert's honor. So here to share more about his legacy in film, TV, and stage is comedian, sure. writer, and radio personality, Jeff Regurian. So Jeff, good to see you again. <laughs> I um, feel like every time we talk, it's because somebody has passed away, unfortunately, yeah. but you knew everyone in the comedy world. I love being with you guys. Yeah, yeah but we got you got to bring me back when something happy happens. I know, seriously, I know. I just <laughs> yeah. like one of those moments I had with Gilbert. I mean, nicest guy. I mean, he yeah. was such a delight when he was here in our studio. You know, that documentary that he was here about was about his life. It was released five years ago. It shows so many aspects to his life beyond comedy, Jeff. So when you think of him and his legacy in entertainment, what comes to mind off the top of your head? Look, he was my friend for more than forty years. Um, he was. And you know what? I got the opportunity to always tell him that he was my favorite comedian. As Aww. a kind of comedy historian, I always get asked, who's your favorite comedian? And I never had to change that. It was always Gilbert Gottfried. And for me to have met him originally was such a treat. And I mean, he was in my book. He starred in a film that I wrote. You know, um, we, had, we had a lot of really fun times together. He was a very unique and special person very warm-hearted, um, and I have so many funny stories about yeah. I'm sure you do. I'm sure you do. Now, the director of that documentary said while working on that uh, film, he discovered that Gilbert was kind of frugal, or am I being <laughs> kind with those words, saying he was a lot more than that? I did the book on the comic strip uh, that Chris Rock wrote the introduction for. It was called Make Him Laugh, and I had an interview all the big stars that came out of that club, Jerry Seinfeld, Billy Crystal, Colin Quinn, and of course, Gilbert Gottfried. Yeah. And he was, the, he was the only one who insisted that we took him out to lunch. Right. <laughs> and and he, chose, he chose the place. So Richie Tinkin, who was the owner and founder Richie, of Richie, my Gottfried, goodness. Yeah, and, and Dan, you had, you had interviewed us at the time that this book came out. Um, so we take Gilbert to Pastis. That was his choice. Very trendy place, yep. very crazy. Much too noisy to even do an interview. When I turned <laughs> on my recorder, and Richie, Richie was paying for everything, right? So we finally get to do the interview, and Gilbert insists he had never been at the club. He said he only came for lunch. He had no idea what the comic strip was. He said he, <laughs> he, said he heard it had good electricity. <laughs> it had the best electricity of any comedy mm. club in the city. Yeah. And he heard that they, they had one chair and the comedians would take turns sitting in that chair. He, he came up with such ridiculous things. Yeah. And I was hysterical laughing trying to interview him. Right. My, my, you know, my favorite comedian. It was a great opportunity for me to go back and forth with him. It was so, incredible. So, you know, Jeff, Gilbert had a voice that you just recognized immediately as soon as he started talking, right? He was born in Brooklyn. He's true New Yorker. Mm -hmm. So when, it, I guess, so many people have so many stories uh, of, of Gilbert. When did you first meet him? Um, because he started a movie that you wrote, right, called Seeing is Believing? Yeah, Seeing is Believing uh, with uh, Camille Donatacci, who years later became Camille Grammer. And it was a movie in which he played a guy named Nat Snats, who was wearing glasses that looked like this. And he was trying to meet women ah. wearing these kind of glasses. And so I turned, at the time I was still in dental practice, I turned my dental office into an eye uh, office, an eye surgeon's office, and he comes for new glasses and he wants to pay for x-ray vision. His name was Nat Snats, and, uh, <laughs> and it, was, <laughs> it was hilarious. We yeah. filmed it and he was just, so funny and then i took him to uh an after party at a, at a big club and they were so excited that he was coming they expected him to order champagne 
and they took him into the VIP room, and they, when they asked him what he wanted, he said, I'll have a glass of water. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, obviously everybody knows him for his voice. It's, yes. It was basically hard to miss. I mean, he was on so many shows. He was the voice of Iago on uh, in in uh, Aladdin. Aladdin. So and he was the off back duck. Yeah, I mean, people are wondering though. Like a after he's on the air, is that really what his voice sounds like? Is yeah. does that you know does he talk like that all? Did he talk like that all the time? <laughs> I used to wonder that too, but no. I have video interviews with him on my channel, on my Comedy Matters TV channel on YouTube. You can hear him speaking in a regular voice. Wow. But when he would come out on stage, you know, he'd come out with his eyes closed and his hands out like that. And he was unstoppable. There was mm -hmm. nobody funnier than Gil. There were times I had to beg him to stop because the pain was so great. <laughs> and, oh, my uh, goodness. Oh, there's the picture. In, oh. com uh, in comedy, there's a thing about, you know, People in comedy tend not to laugh when they're at a show, you know, because you've heard so many jokes, you know. When I used to write for people, I would give them the jokes and they'd be like, that's funny. Oh, that's very funny. I'm hysterical. But their face would stay straight. They wouldn't even smile. And so with Gilbert, I, I had tears running down my face. <laughs> my I literally had to, I had to stop. I can't take yeah. the pain anymore. My uh, side ran. Oh, Jeffrey. That's so it's always so good talking to you, um, and it's, it's great to hear so many of your memories of so many of these comedic lenses, and it's also good to see you're keeping the fax game strong. Was it? The, that's the largest fax machine next to you that I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thanks for I keeping keep the fax game alive. Uh, Walkman. Yeah, and really. My, uh, tape player. <laughs> oh my, oh my gosh, you are hilarious. <laughs> All right, Jeffrey Gurian, good to talk to you as always. Thank you. Great to see you guys. Hope we get to meet on something happy next yes. time. Oh, let's hope agreed, so. Agreed. Agreed. Thank you so much. All Have right, 9:42.